That's a new one. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, today, for the second time today, we're going to talk about getting back to training after a break. So, Garf, what are those breaks about? So, we're looking at returning to training the first one to two sessions, maybe, when you're coming back after an expected or unexpected break. So, yeah. something like a... Hopefully, this scenario is an expected break where you're looking at something like a week or two weeks off where you've taken a, an at-home holiday, uh, a less than ideal holiday, most would say, or you've had something like a, you may have a forced isolation or you may have some kind of roadblock to your training environment, so such as your gym closing down again, or your, you know, any, any kind of, there's a, so many scenarios at the moment where you could possibly be removed from training. Yeah. So we're just going to talk about a little bit about the first one or two sessions back and how you can approach this via an expected or unexpected scenario across yeah. our different spectrum of audience. Yeah. Yep. Audience cohort. Audience sounds. It doesn't sound right, does it? Audience. No. I suppose you. No. Watchers. Population. Watcher. Or yeah. Watchers. <laughs> They're outside the window. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like exactly as Gareth was saying, right? You've had a small break off. We'll say a week, two weeks off is is what we'll talk about. The the things that kind of decrease during a week off um or the things that will decrease enough for you to actually really notice uh your one rms and like the strength lifts probably haven't changed at all you know if you're a normal athlete it's different if you're training every day obviously and you're used to that kind of flow of of lifting heavyweights constantly but if you're a normal person you train train between three and five times a week you're not going to have changes in one rm max strength for squat front squat deadlift press strict press those things are going to stay fairly constant i would think the like the higher your skill is the faster and the steeper yeah. the drop off will be in the short term but then obviously because you have such a high skill level the faster it will return to normal yeah. and the easier it'll return so like if you're a high level weightlifter that full week off will affect you an awful lot in that first session because you're used to being somewhere up here in your snatching, clean and jerk, your movement is really sharp. Your skill is like really high. You've everything moving great. And then if you take an unexpected week off, like you'll drop somewhere, you'll drop fairly sharply. Like yeah. you, you'll feel like you've lost like somewhere in the region of like, you could feel like you've lost like 20 kilos off both yeah. lifts. Obviously that is absolutely not what happened, but your skill level will drop off very sharp. But when in one to two days, you could be, you could claim back 90% of that kind of feeling, I suppose. Yeah. Definitely. So that is like the the skill component. So just practicing a, a like discrete muscular skill will like degrade very very quickly. Uh, and so when we're looking at at this video in particular, we're looking at our first kind of two sessions back. We need to do two things. So the first thing is we need to practice that skill. Uh, we need to practice that skill at an intensity which is low enough that you can do it absolutely perfectly at the right tempo right movement everything must be absolutely perfect so for a lot of people if they're weightlifting so if they're snatching or clean and jerking it's probably going to be an empty bar up to around 40 percent of their one rep max uh when you look at which skills you should practice you should probably practice the ones that need the most work um if if you're a crossfitter obviously it's a bit more difficult because you have such a broad range of skills and, and the real difficult thing with CrossFit is the gymnastic skills only happen for the vast majority of people at incredibly high intensity. So most people can't do 40 muscle-ups in a row uh, or most people can't do 20 muscle-ups in a row even. So then they're then practicing one muscle-up is so close to one RM that it's probably not going to be feasible in the first session back. So if you're if you are a weightlifter, like the simplest thing to pick is is your full snatch. So that's the easiest, very light full snatch, like Fitz was saying. But if you're something like a CrossFitter, if you watched our previous kind of uh, managing your resources for CrossFit, you would have seen that we recommend that you move through certain blocks of training where you're focusing on different skill sets and different yeah. aspects. So you need to focus on whatever block you're in. So hopefully you've been smart about your program and uh, and God forbid you're following an intelligent program. <laughs> so if, you, if, if you're in the middle of a gymnastics block and you've been focusing on um, like handstand push-ups and something like, uh, I, I don't ring, like ring, ring muscle-ups like Fitz was saying. Whatever they do. Whatever, <laughs> whatever that crack is. So you've been focusing on your gymnastics skills heavily. You 
don't try see where your snatch is gone or you don't see where your max back squat is and you just practice your skills with a very very moderate amount of volume yeah. so in terms of those kind of body weight skills uh, in like the snatch we have absolute values that we can use so we can go like 40 percent, and we know we can put a limit on that and then you say 40 percent is no more that's absolute all i'm going to get to and i know exactly how it needs to look and feel and i'm going to spend a limited amount of time so i'm going to put a time cap on that and i'm going to do it for no more than that so then when we get to our kind of more obtuse skills like our crossfitters or our real athletes where we have things that are yeah like I, the real athlete then like what yeah. we're talking about is like people who don't their sport doesn't happen in the gym uh like their sk- their skill could be a front rack reverse lunge yeah. with kettlebells like it could be so simple but it is that thing of like the crossfitter like whatever phase of training you're in where this is the skill you're practicing um that's what you should pick you should pick like a turkish get up yeah. um at very very light weights practice that the, the like the limit you use for that then though would be um is a feeling of how it feels like yeah. it's, it's the most subjective kind of uh will ever give you in training but like how it feels is important so as soon as you feel like the movement starts to degrade or if it starts to feel hard you feel tired so absolutely this is the time to leave way more than you need in the tank yeah so if you're doing your handstand push-ups and you do something like 10 sets of three and after the fifth set it starts to feel kind of sloppy you can drop it there if you're doing handstand walks that's the time to drop it yeah and you let it go whereas with your like if you if you are like a real athlete and you've your new movement is um like front rack lunges or snatch grip rdls like you pick a weight like 80 percent of the working sets you're the weight you're using for two weeks before one week before and then you do some moderate reps moderate yeah. volume and one of the most important things we think about this is that you should put a time cap for everyone yeah. so snatching cleaning jerking whatever if it's a power lifter most likely squat is the first thing you'll return back to i think so yeah like the time cap is there for a few reasons right because everybody makes the same mistake they'll come back after their time off and they're I'm going to do a big session out tonight yeah right so the first reason the time cap is there is obviously to limit doms and to limit, limit central nervous system fatigue. So our whole point of training today is so we can train incredibly well tomorrow. And then at the day after that, we train better. The day after that, we train better. So the first reason we put a time cap on is so we're not too fatigued or beat up to do our next session and to gain value from the next session. The second reason we put a time cap on is because you have to do the two things, right? So you have to accrue volume and practice your skill. And what'll end up happening is you start bleeding one into the other, right? So you'll end up practicing so much of your skill that you start accruing volume. And then you'll think, oh, well, I've done so much volume here that I'm not going to go on and do my goblet squats with the kettlebell or I'm not going to go on and do my push-ups and sit-ups. So that is, we want to have this very, very structured. And then that will also mean is when we go back to doing our normal sessions uh, that we'll be a bit more strict with ourselves on timing as well. Like, this isn't the time to just go and fuck around at the gym for three hours on a Saturday. This is the time to be, like, smart. Like, incredibly, like, much shorter than your normal session yeah. will last. So if your sessions normally last in the region of an hour and a half, like, you want to cut this back to, like, 40 minutes. Yeah. For the easiest group to have an expected time off is our absolute strength group. So our, is our powerlifters, realistically. So because this, the skill curve of the powerlifting movements is so low and <sighs> they are so fatiguing in terms of absolute weight... There's the week people, off. Yeah. There's people shouting at, at the screen of their laptop now and there's just like mass gainer flying out of their mouths. <laughs> they know like so you know that week off almost for some people is more of um is nearly a good break, like yeah. it's a good time. It's for absolute strength. You're not gonna forget how to squat in a week or you're not gonna forget how to uh deadlift or you're not gonna forget the fine movements of that. If anything, it's just gonna be a little bit of a break. Uh so the most ideal scenario here is that you have planned this break and you knew it was coming up and you peaked your weightlifting the week before you left or you peaked yeah. your powerlifting or you peaked your, your crossfit or whatever you're doing, like you're doing something smart. For our unexpected breaks, so for our powerlifters, if you're anywhere within, say, nine, eight to nine weeks of a, of a powerlifting prep, of a, like a 12-week prep, the chances are you can almost certainly, so you can hit this little primer session so you do like very short basic movements like uh, kind of um some of your skill work and then some kind of uh aerobic work and then you can almost certainly move back into your normal program if it's planned out 
without any hesitation. Yeah. For our other people, for our weightlifters, our crossfitters, the chances are you can't really just jump back in without some intelligent adjustment. Some bit of like ramping up onto it. Yeah. Uh, Like I can't stress enough the importance of making sure you don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not an injury. Like it's, you're just robbing progress from the next few sessions. So like, don't think about like, oh, I'm going to burn off all of those margaritas that I had on, on my holiday or whatever it was. Like, you just need to think, I need to take a tiny little bit now, tiny little bit the next day. And and a big part of that not hurting ourselves is warming up and cooling down. Gurf already said that we're going to be recommending these sessions be short and very, very kind of tight. But we don't want to cut the time, like... You don't want to do a 45-minute session and you do 20 minutes of full snatch practice with 40 kilos and then 20 minutes of whatever it might be, belt squats, and then you have a five-minute or two-and-a-half-minute warm-up, two-and-a-half-minute cool-down. Like, spend your time in the warming-up, spend your time in the cooling-down. The warm-up is kind of also accruing some volume, so, like, take your time there, stretch it out. Uh, Obviously, be strict with your timing. Don't do the the half an hour fo- falling around on a foam roller before you start training uh but do like make sure you you hit those two movements or those two aspects of the session um and kind of give them especially the cool down a bit more respect than you usually would so i think the most kind of one of the more important points as well is um if you are in the middle of a a peaking phase or whatever you need to be very very realistic about what has happened <laughs> like how have you lost where you are and like it, it, you need to be just very very realistic with yourself and you need to restart it so if you're weightlifting and if you've had an unexpected week off you may need to take a week to kind of ramp up again mm. but if you're looking at like something like two weeks or more there's a good chance that you just need to scrap what happened you need to acknowledge like the worst thing you want to do is start off and try reclaim what you're at and spend apps weeks yeah. trying to reclaim where you were which it inevitably cannot happen like training you know training doesn't work like that you know you need to move through certain phases of volume intensity skill acquisition all that kind of crack to get back to where you are so you know you need to reset you need to acknowledge so you go it's not ideal that it happened but it obviously happened for a reason and that you need to then readjust where you are you may need to restart your cycle again so if you're somewhere like in your tr- threes or fours and you're snatching your clean and jerk or weightlifting there's if you have an unexpected week or week two weeks off you can probably jump back into your trees yeah. but if you're looking at you know next the week bef- the week after your was going to be your max week and then you come back and you've had after two weeks off you may need to just acknowledge yeah. that that max week is not going to happen and then you need to readjust your training cycle and restart it again in um, weightlifting I'd, I'd say as a rule of thumb if you were within kind of three weeks of of going for singles mm-hmm. um this having a week off will will very very much affect those singles yeah and i think like the natural reaction of every athlete is just going to be oh i'm going to work harder and I'll, I'll get back there and like i'll work really hard for the next two weeks and i'll get back and i'll be back on the program if working really hard does it like Working really hard doesn't make you get there faster in normal training cycles. So there's no point thinking that after a week off, working really, really hard is going to get you there any faster. You need to work really intelligently and do the right amount of work, and then you'll get there. Again, like if you... Weightlifters are probably the most at risk of losing yeah. all of their gains in terms of... Uh, or like totally disrupting a training cycle. So if you are... So that the higher and the more specific the skill acquisition is, the uh, the more the harder it will become to back after a certain period of time. Yeah, you have to assume that like a gymnastics athlete who might just do yeah. pummel horse or like one of those really specific skills, like that's the kind of equivalent of it, you know, that like you're just practicing one thing, so then you don't do that thing for seven days in a row, it's going to have a huge effect. This is a very depressing one to listen to, isn't it's it? It's a little bit depressing to We're talk about. We're just taking away all their dreams. So, like the real, like you just Jimmy is listening to this now on the way back from um, West Cork on a Sunday evening. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna train so hard this week." Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's um, it's it's powerful knowledge to know that you just you need to be ready to kind of scrap where you were. Yeah. Like that is probably the biggest thing. It's just to scrap and be okay with saying it's shit that you had to take that 
two weeks off. So obviously the ideal thing that you had to go on holidays with your family. Well, obviously that that then is the <laughs> planned, pe- like that is the planned week off. So you when you got that planned week off, hopefully you trained accordingly to that. Yeah. You had a nice week off, and then it's now it's time to start another eight, twelve, sixteen then week cycle. Ex- it's an exciting time. Yeah. You know, like you're yeah. starting at, you're building a base and going. Yeah. Uh, but if, yeah. If you had a, if you had that week off, you had time to kind of. Um, <laughs> mentally recuperate yeah. plan your next training cycle build up some excitement for your next couple of weeks of training if you had that unexpected week off I think it's just really important that you're ready yeah. to be shit and you're ready to restart the work again and I know that's a really shit scenario where you've yeah. like put in especially if you're in weightlifting and you got somewhere like you're you're ready and this is the best training cycle you've had in ages because you were working from home and you're more rested and then whatever happened and you've lost all that work you've put in it is it is pretty shit but you need to be mentally yeah. capable enough to oh rec- absolutely to recuperate and say look that didn't that is expected i would almost say for a weightlifter in particular that you should be ready to come back at the start of a new training cycle yeah i would say more likely than not you've lost most of your gains for that period of time if it's somebody i'm coaching yeah that's what i want yeah i want somebody to come back and i don't want somebody who thinks they're going to hit a a single in three weeks time because they were three weeks out from hitting a single when they left uh like i think if you are doing the kind of mini needs analysis on yourself when you come back yeah uh you're always going to be better off just starting again mm-hmm. uh like and when we say starting again we mean starting with high volume stuff building like fixing all your issues as you come up through and then if that's eight 12 16 weeks later yeah uh, then you'll make some really good progress I would say, basically for everyone, you will absolutely not stunt your progress if you come back after your unexpected break yeah. with the assumption that you need to start again. I, I can almost guarantee you that it will it'll have no negatives. No. Like that is the only reason we're kind of um, recommending this kind of how to readjust is because most people won't want to do that. <laughs> most people, so like the ultimate scenario, if you had full control over an athlete as yourself, if you were the most realistic or you're coaching someone and you had the most amount of, uh, the most amount of leeway over them. If it's somebody with one of us one-to-one, yeah, they're not going to get the two ramp on sessions. No, th- there is no, there would be no ramp on. No. We would just go two weeks. So yeah. it's time to go again. You would act like you had peaked or whatever. Yeah. And then you start your next series of eight weeks of, of yeah. peaking or 10 weeks or whatever. Because I can almost guarantee you that you don't have the resources, the skill, or the knowledge to readjust your training correctly. It like yeah, like you just don't have. You will probably won't have your coach with you unless you have a coach. Like you don't have the resources to recover enough to do that kind of extra training the first two week, three weeks, because the chances are you're going back to college, you're going back to work. Yeah. You have so many other things in your life that you're not a full time athlete that you can't. Um, you can't readjust on the fly accordingly. But I bet you most full-time athletes would just acknowledge, I can almost guarantee that most athletes would say, okay, time for a new training yeah, session again. Absolutely. It's time for a new block. Like that is the the best piece of advice from this video is if you've come back from an unexpected training break, it, it's just start again. Yeah. Like I can guarantee you that if you do that, the next couple of weeks have a huge chance of being better than they would be if you tried to readjust. Yeah. Like the only time you could really justify to us or anyone else that you need to readjust is if you had a comp in three to four weeks. Definitely. And and yeah. even then, it may be worth not doing the comp yeah. or training through the comp. So if it was a qualifier for another reason, then that's fair enough. But there's a good chance you could recommend not doing the comp. Yeah. Like, a bit depressing to say, but you will be so much more thankful. Like, kind of look at yourself and acknowledge that you... It'll be much more enjoyable if you spend the next three to four weeks having really shit training sessions, kind of fighting with yourself, trying to yeah. acknowledge that you should be in a better place. Whereas if you had made that, because exce- that's where you're going to end up realistically. There's more of a chance. Yeah, yeah, the place you're going to end up is you're going to go for this new max in two or three weeks. Yep. Uh, or maybe even a bit longer. You know, you could max out again in five or six weeks. And you're not going to have the same results as if you took the next four months yeah. and built a, f- a full new training cycle around it because and you will be so much happier in training i can guarantee you again if, if you come back and you go yeah. new training cycle and then you'll build up that obviously 
physical momentum, so the physical physical adaptions you have from training, but that psychological momentum you'll have built up. Yeah. If you come into that first session going, okay, new training cycle, I'm ready to ramp up again. Whereas the outer option is coming back and you're like, oh, I, w- I was doing 120 for triples <laughs> two weeks ago and now this 100 for, for two reps feels so heavy. Yeah. Um, and like that is a it's a huge part of training is is the kind of um, psychological momentum building up, you know. Yeah. So that would be the ultimate recommendation from this video is just start again. Yeah. And I think like just to finish on this, we're not making these this recommendation in particular. We're not making this on the back of, oh, this is what all of these journals have found. This is what all these different training manuals have have said we've all been in this position where you do the stupid thing you know we've all come back and gone for high intensity too early we've seen athletes do it we've seen fucking loads of people do it uh it's not worth it like if you can take our experiences anything just trust us and start the training cycle again start with your high volume stuff and then go on yeah like because you will spend so much time fighting with yourself yeah and inevitably there's a much bigger chance that you will get kind of uh, kind of a training depression yeah because it's every day is a constant battle it's called burnout where you're where you you think where you should have been instead of where you are at now you know and it's uh, it's a terrible place to be in training whereas you wouldn't have noticed that time if you had reset mentally Uh, no that would be a good display of of, um, would that be resilience if you acknowledged no resilience would be if you plowed ahead with training if you plowed ahead with training and got injured and then you kind of positively came back but so like take if, this for, as an example yeah. right you go on holidays next week you come back yeah uh like resilience is bouncing back from a negative stimulus in a positive direction so you would that did not your be, two like, weeks of like super hard training and then yeah. you realize oh that's a bad thing to do right and then I'm going to adjust. And when I come back after this, I need another week off now. Mm-hmm. When I come back after this week off, I'm going to just start my training cycle again and do a high volume phase and then taper off. What if you came back from your two weeks off yeah. and you... Intelligence? Is that what that's called? Where that's intelligence, just, yeah. Where you just go, okay, time for a new training cycle. <laughs> um, that would be the biggest recognition, just to reiterate. Yeah. Like if you... It's just fight the battle with yourself and go okay we're doing it this again and i know it's hard but that's training here look and it's hard when the 16 year old crossfitter is training in the same gym as you yeah is like oh, i'm snatching more than you today like, yeah yeah it's you're grand. Old, yeah it's grand it'll be fine look training owes you nothing you know he'll drop out soon yeah <laughs> or like the lads will get him on a bit of anivar you know <laughs> like you training owes you nothing you know so you were you're not owed those gains that you were due pre these two weeks yeah and like what's a 16 week cycle of trend like you know <laughs> just to get going again just to kick start you like thanks for listening um a little bit depressing but we if hope you want to see that cool jumper that owen's wearing they won't mind be able to get this oh they won't they're out of stock at the moment uh there'll be more stuff for sale soon Lawrence number three yeah um we will have crew necks as we call them we're in tele incredibly bad at promoting stuff we have i know we're very bad at it <laughs> i feel so bad for doing it now thank god people buy stuff <laughs> um we will have nice stuff coming up yeah thanks guys <laughs>